Hello, Richard here. And today you find me in the workshop and I'm going to be doing a bit of work on my mini lathe. Uh, this is all to do with an upcoming video that I'm going to be doing in which I need to cut a screw thread. And I found that there's a bit of a problem with my lathe. That's pretty typical if you've got a mini lathe. These things are mass produced in China and brand new. They cost about 400 quid. That's 400 UK pounds. And as a result, they need a little bit of work doing when you buy one. So if you get one of these, don't expect it just to work perfectly straight out of the box. Expect to have to do a little bit of work here and there. Given that these cost about probably the same price as a decent cordless drill, um, you can't really expect too much for your money. So what you do get if you buy one of these is the basis of a really excellent little precision mini lathe. And with a little bit of TLC and a bit of fettling here and there, you can turn all these into a really decent bit of kit. So anyway, let me show you what the problem is with this. Now, in order to cut a screw thread on this, I'm going to need to run the lathe forwards to be able to cut the screw thread. And then I'm going to need to be able to reverse the lathe and run it backwards to go back to the beginning again. Now, the problem with that is that everything runs fine in forward gear. So if I run the lathe forward, if you listen, the sound is notable by its absence. Now, if I run it backwards manually, I don't need to power this up to do it. Um, for a start, if I did, it would probably wreck it. So if I run it backwards, yeah, not so good. And the reason for this is, so I've got the side off at the moment. The reason for that is that there's a problem with the, the gears, the gears that the gear tumbler that you move to put it into forward or reverse. When it's running one way, everything meshes and it's all quite happy. And then when it runs in reverse, everything slops around and moves and things start grinding. So what I'll do, I'll take you around the back and we'll have a look in there and we'll see if we can work out what's going on and see if we can fix it. Okay, so if we have a look around the back, what I'll do, I'll just, these, these are all the gears, the gubbins that uh, connect from the chuck down to the lead screw where the problem is. Well, the problem's here somewhere, not in the lead screw. So if I rotate the chuck by hand forwards, you can see everything's quite nice and it's all running quite freely. No problems at all. Now, if I run it backwards, watch, watch over here. Ah, uh, yeah. What's happening is you see all this, this wobble and all this slop in the mechanism. As I rotate backwards and forwards, you see this starts to sort of take up the backlash. This bit wobbles a bit as well, but this gear starts hitting on the edge of this housing here. That's actually, that's what the noise is. So what we've got to do is stop that from happening somehow. And now there's a couple of things we can look at. Now one would be if we, you see this lever moves up when we move it in reverse, there's a lot of wobble. So if we could hold that down, hold it in place better, then that's running backwards and there's no noise at all. That's absolutely fine. So that's one way thing to look at is to stop this moving so much. Um, there's a lot of play here as well. You can see this kind of, it wants to sit there, but it's quite easy just to pull it beyond that. And uh, at which point this gear is going to start hitting again. So the other thing would be to remove the play from there or other, otherwise to remove some of this sideways play. So there's a few things we need to look at. So um, the first thing to do really is to start to take it apart and have a look. So let me grab some tools. And I'll take off this piece here. Sorry if I get in your way, but uh, I'll try not to block your view too much as we do this. So let's take that off and have a bit of a look. Um, oh, actually, you can see there, that's actually cracked. It's a piece. <laughs> wow, look at that. There's a piece there, totally broken off the side, and there's a little bit of swarf stuck in there as well. That's not going to be helping anything, is it? Right, okay. Still, let's have a look. So... When this, this, this lever actually moves into two positions, it can either move down here, and this is the uh, feed in the backwards direction. So this reverses the lead screw if you want to cut left-hand threads. And if you move it up this way, it switches it over so it'll cut threads in the usual direction. But you can see that it doesn't quite meet up. This piece here doesn't butt right up to there, but when we try to go into reverse, 
it can it can pull beyond that. So one thing we could look at doing would be to machine a little brass collar to slip over here. And we could put a little brass collar in there, which would, it could only be as thick as the thinnest gap, which looks like that side, which looks to be about a mil of gap, which would give us a millimeter here. So whether a millimeter on this side would be enough to stop it from hitting, probably not. The other thing is as well, that with this handle here, there's a spike inside on a shaft and there's a lot of wobble in there. So it's possible that the, the shaft in here that locks into the little notch in the back, it's possible we could look at remachining another one of those to make it a tighter fit so there's less wobble. And the other thing would be to see if we could just remove the amount of uh, play inside here. So. I think really we want to get this off and have a look at it and uh, and see what we're up against. So let's uh, let's take it apart and have a look. Right, let's pop that gear off. That's on there quite tight, so. Oh, that's coming off. There we go. I was just about to resort to going and getting some heavy duty tools then. And I think it sensed that and it decided to play ball. All right. And there's a little woodruff key here or a key. I don't know if that's a woodruff variety, but it's a key anyway. And it doesn't matter if it's a woodruff key or a regular key, it's probably going to fall off and go inside somewhere and never be seen again. So we'll put that somewhere safe. Okay, what have we got now? So it looks like this probably wants to come off. We might be lucky and be able to get this off without taking these gears off. But it's probably easier actually just to take these gears off as well. Let's just take all that off. I think that'll be the easiest way. Hopefully we won't find any more broken parts inside as we dismantle it. Okay, we need to take the bottom gear off as well. So it's a larger key. So we do that. Okay, that's just turning the lead screw there. So I'm just going to lock the lead screw in on the bed, see if that'll give me enough oomph to be able to do that with. No, okay. On the other end of the lead screw, there's a large nut. Let me just go in and get a spanner. And what we do is we'll just hold the nut on the end of the lead screw and hopefully that'll give us enough tension just to undo the Allen key, which it has. Allen key, Allen screw. Allen key is used to undo the Allen screw. It's all right, I do know what I'm doing, honest. Right, so let's take this off, have a look, make sure the washer doesn't get lost. And pop that gear off. Like the way I say, just pop the gear off optimistically as that's just going to come straight off without skinning my knuckles um that's on there quite tightly as well is it going to go just wiggle it side to side a bit i'd rather not lever these off because they're only plastic there we go it's coming now and it's always tempting to go and get a crowbar well i say crowbar screwdriver something to lever these off with but often you regret it because things end up just snapping uh, there we go, that's easy. That's on a little metal sleeve in there. So that one's easier to remove. Now what we got. So I think we can get at that now. Which size is that? Not the big one. So we'll go down to the smaller one. And do this. See what horrors look within. Okay, that's one. And two, that's good. We can just put that to one side. And let's have a look here. So is this going to come off? Is 
Looks like it might. Ah, let me just uh, pop this out. There we go. Okay, that's good. Right, so what else can we see? We can see that this is not a very... Let me grab my pointed stick. We can see here this isn't very thick. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But this is not a very thick uh, journal in here. And this is quite ropey here, so this is going to wobble a lot. You know, that's not going to sit very flat. Um, so, yeah, that's not ideal. Probably not a lot we can do with that. This is the uh, the detent that locks in. And, yeah, you can see there's a bit of play with that, quite a lot of play. Look at that wobble. You can see how much that wobbles around. If we could remove that wobble, then that would be another option. We could possibly make another one of these, although... I suspect this might be hardened steel, which would be trickier because I don't have any way of hardening steel at the present time. So let's have a bit of a bit of a think about this. What I'll probably do is take this apart and have a look inside, see if there's any way we could actually improve it. We might even be able to make a little sleeve or something just to tighten that up. So we just it just doesn't wobble around quite as much as it is. You, know, you see that there's a good millimeter of play easily on that. And taking that out is only going to improve things. So let's see if we can take this apart and uh, have a look at how it's made. I can probably do it. Let me just see if I can uh, do it without needing a vice or anything. I might be able to just undo the nut by hand. And be prepared for springs to fly out all over the place now. Okay, that's actually threaded on. So, again, I'm going to be a bit careful in case of springs. I'm just going to point it out away from the direction of the window in case this flies off and goes through the window. No, that's okay. All right, so we have a barrel here and the plunger with a spring. Let's put that over to one side. And this fits in here. I don't know if you can see that. That's really sloppy. That's really, really sloppy in there. So how could we approach that? I could fit a sleeve in there, but it's going to be a very skinny little sleeve. There's not much gap that needs to be filled up. And I can't machine more metal onto this because that doesn't tend to work. Um, so the options would be to make this hole smaller or to make this diameter bigger. And it wouldn't be too hard a job just to make a new one of these, but to make this a bit of a better fit on into there to reduce the wobble somewhat. The question is, is do I want to do that? Because this is pretty rough. And the hole in here, the hole inside this bit is pretty rough as well. That could do with tidying up. So that can almost do with a, being reamed out or smoothed out anyway to get a better fit. Let me just, I just want to see whether this is a hardened piece because that's one of my concerns as well as I don't want to Let's really put a piece of soft, mild steel in there if it's just going to wear out very quickly. So I'm just going to go and grab a file, see if we can file that. Okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, that is hardened steel there. Doesn't stop me from making one, but it just means that uh, the piece I make might wear out a bit quicker. But then again, I'm not going to be moving it all that much anyway, so I think it might be quite... Uh, I think it's probably best to make a new one of these. And what we'll probably do is we'll make a new one of these that fits this barrel much more closely. 
And I think we'll also make up a little sleeve for this piece as well, because it's lost a bit on the edge, which is not good. So we'll make up a little thin brass collar, about a mil thick, to go over that. So what we'll do, actually, while we're here, let me just get my uh, me measuring device. Let's pick this back up off the floor. So what we'll do, we'll just take a few measurements. So we'll get the OD of this. Now that's saying nine millimeters there. 8.6, 8.6 that way. So it's not particularly round, nine millimeters. So we're gonna to need to make our collar nine millimeters bore. And then for this piece here, we need to know the inside diameter of this. So. Let's have a look in there and that's the OD or well, the OD will need to be about 10.5 millimeters. Okay. I think we know what we need to be doing. Okay. So before we can start making the new parts of the lathe, I'm going to have to actually put the lathe back together and get it working again. So I'm going to need to rebuild the gearbox so I can do that. Originally, I had these gears in the gearbox and these were set up to give a reduction down to a 1.25 millimeter screw pitch on the lead screw. That was for a, a screw thread I was going to cut, but obviously I can't cut the screw thread because the uh, well, because of the aforementioned problems. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rebuild the gearbox, but with these gears and these are the ones that uh, came shipped in place in the lathe and the there's two 20 tooth metal gears and two 80 tooth plastic gears. And these give a very high gear reduction to get the lead screw to rotate as slowly as possible so that you get a nice fine finish when you're uh, power feeding. So we'll get those fitted and then we can start cracking on with making some parts. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to just face the edge off on that one. So then I'll lock the uh, saddle to the lead screw, which isn't going to move. Up the speed a little bit, bring it in, touch it off. And then hopefully it won't move when we try and just face it off. So now we're going to do the hole. So I'm going to do the hole before I do the OD. The outside diameter on this needs to come down a bit. So at the moment, we're at 12 mil. This needs to come down to 10.4. But before I do that, I'm going to do the hole in the middle. The reason is the hole is 9 mil. The outside diameter is only going to be about 10.4. So the wall thickness will be really thin. And if I try and put a great big hole through it, With the thin wall it's just gonna bend around a bit so what we'll do we'll just start uh, making some holes so we'll start off with a center drill wherever that's gone there it is so we just use a center drill just to 
get things started, get things centered. So yeah, the tail stock's not perfectly aligned on this, so it might move around a little bit, but it's okay. It'll just get the hole started for us. That'll do. That'll do for that. And then we'll just start walking up through the drill sizes a bit and uh, creep up on the size we want. I'm not going to bully the metal out of this too much because that's the thing with the mini lathe. It's not really man enough to be hogging tons of metal in one go, and I'm not in a rush anyway, so we'll take it fairly steady with this. And uh, we'll see where we end up. So, so where's that? Just reading off the scale here, so four mil, one, two, three, four, five, I'll go six mil actually. Be enough for what we want to do. So we'll go up a size bigger, see how that does. That'll do. And another one. I can probably go a bit larger than this, but we'll, uh, we won't chance our luck. Let's go along with that for now. So far so good. Next we're up to 8 mil. We need to stop at 9, so this is uh, getting close to the final size. So let's just see how far that went in. Again, reading off the dial on the side. Uh, we've got 1, 2, Three, four, five. There we go. Excellent. Right, and on to the final drill. Nine mil. Bit of a rusty old drill, this one, but uh, let's see if we can rub some rust off it anyway with this. on the uh, ruler on the uh, quill. So what have we got? 16 mil, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So yeah, we're probably about deep enough on that, I'd say. And that, that should be our final diameter. So let's see if we can have a bit of a look at that. Just measure what we've got there long as it's over nine mil and we're oh, we're looking about 8.7 so i'm gonna have to come out on that a little bit that's a shame because that's the only drill bit i've got of that size we're 8.85 so i'm going to need that to be a bit bigger that bore so i'm probably gonna have to use a boring bar for that and i don't have much in the way of boring bars let's see what we've got in here um we've got this one but this is probably a little bit yeah it's too big to get in there um, so yeah, I'm going to have to make up a boring bar. I'll probably get an old broken end mill or something like that, and I'll just grind up a, 
a little mini boring bar so we can get that spot onto the diameter that we want. Okay, so what we'll probably do is take this old broken tap and we'll see if we can make a little boring bar out of that. So, see how it goes. Well, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clamp that onto the bench because I don't want this to go anywhere. So, let's put a couple of clamps on there. Stop it wandering about. All right. See where we end up. So I'm just going to remove some of the uh, the uh, teeth off the side of the old tap just to narrow it down a little bit. Periodically cool it in the water. We don't want to get it too hot. If it gets too hot, it can lose its hardness and lose its temper. That's looking pretty good. Let's clean up that side as well. Okay, so now we want to look at sort of making a, a cutting edge on it. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this edge down, I think, a little bit further, just to get it out of the way. And that's going to be my cutting edge there. So again, I'm just going to take this side down here a little bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm going to start cutting into here now just to create the edge of it. See there, we're starting to get a little tooth coming up there. So I just need to build that up and then I can sharpen that into a cutting edge. Again, we don't want to get any too hot, so keep plunging it in the cold water. looking too bad so we'll just take the edge off a little bit and 
Okay, and just flatten that side down a bit as well. Okay, it's looking pretty good. You see we're starting to get sort of a shape of a tooth on the go there. We can thin that out a little bit more. It's looking pretty good. So now we want to just sort of get the, uh, the top relief angle on it a little bit better. Go to the fine wheel and uh, hone it a little tiny bit. And we'll give that a go. Okay, so we've made up a boring bar and we can use that just to get the diameter here exactly where we want it. Let me just back this out a bit and I'm just going to recheck the. Uh, ID that we've got, I think it was 8.5, 8.7. We need it to be about 9, 9.1. So we just need to take out a little tiny bit, really. What I've done here, here you can see I've got a, um, this is a homemade digital depth stop. And it's basically made from a tire tread depth gauge. You can buy these on eBay for a couple of quid. And basically, I bought one of these on eBay. I've uh, 3D printed a bracket and I put some uh, magnets on there to hold it on and it acts as a depth gauge. So what I've done, I've set it so that the boring bar, when it's right at the edges on zero, and then as I wind the boring bar in, this will tell me, like a little sort of poor man's DRO, when I'm at five mil, which is my depth. So let's touch off and we'll take some cuts. So. Yes. Touch off in there. And just take a little skim cut into five mil. And then see where we are. See what measurement we've got. All right, so 8.7 almost. So. A little bit more to come off. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, see where we are with that. This is where I wish I had compressed air in here, but there we go. Early days. Right, what do we got? We got about the same, so hardly touched that. That's all right, we can creep up on where we want to be. See where we are now. Uh, we've got oh, that's pretty good. Eight point nine four. So we're only about point one five of a mil away from where we want to be. So. <laughs> See where we are now. So the the spigot that we want to put this over is pretty much nine mil smack on, and we want a bit of clearance, a little bit. So we've got well, that's telling me nine point yeah nine point one mil. If you can see that on the screen there, nine point nine point one. I'm getting there. nine mil there i'm just going to take a tiny little pass a tiny little bit more i'd rather this fitted over quite easily rather than being too tight Okay, let's see what we've got now. Nine point one four. Just rotate it a bit just in case there's any problems with that. Shouldn't be nine point one. All right, we're going to call that good. So. What we want to do now is turn down the I, the OD so we can get rid of that. And we can set up to take the outside diameter down to the size that we want. So now what we need to do is take the outside diameter down to 10.4 uh, OD because the the ID of the slots is going into is 10.5. So we'll take it to 10.4 and that'll be plus zero and minus whatever we end up at. So if it's a little bit under 10.4, that's fine. I don't want to make it too precise because um, these lathes are fairly agricultural. If you make things too precise, everything's just going to seize up. So you need a little bit of a uh, play in things. Right, so let's, um, let's get set up for that then. So we'll take the boring bar off. I'm going to switch over just to a, a cutter. A cutter? I guess they're all cutters, aren't they? <laughs> right, let's uh, have a look at that. Get that sort of set to a reasonable angle. And just make sure we're all set up properly first. So, how are we doing? Okay, lead screw's disengaged, so we'll get the lead screw back out of neutral. Okay, so we'll just uh, touch off and then we'll start our cut. Now we're going to come in um, five millimeters on this. So I shall just get a bit of black Sharpie on there. And then we can mark 
the uh, extent to which we need to cut. So I'll just set the vernier, vernier? <laughs> well, caliper, sign of the times, isn't it? Vernier, is eh? Right, so we'll just set that to five mil, give us a rough idea. As long as I go a little bit further than I need, that's all that matters. So I'm just gonna come in here, a little bit beyond five mil and make a mark so I know where to cut to. some idea. Touch off in a little bit. See what sort of size we've got at the moment. We need to get it down to about 10.4. And we're about 11.8 at the moment. So we get rid of the glare. It's 11.86. So we've got a fair bit to come off yet. So uh, I'll speed it up and we'll uh, take a bit of a deeper cut. Okay, let's see where we are now. So what we got? Can I get the reflection off there for you? 11.18, so still a little way to go. Uh, 10.96, there you go, so 10.96, so we've got uh, about 0.5 mil to come off. Ten point seven four, so just point three to come off there. Just creeping up on it, you know. I'm not sort of uh, trying to be scientific with this or anything. We're just approaching it gradually. So at ten point five nine there. So uh, 0.2 mil to come off. So we'll see if we can do that in one hit. Let's see where we are. Ten point three eight. So I'm uh, 0.02 mil under. So I'm going to call that done. We're heading for, we're aiming for 10.4 and we're just slightly under. So that should be good enough. All right, next, I'm just going to chamfer the edges on that slightly. Let's just have a look. That's actually not bad on there anyway. Okay, so we'll just change the tool out and... Uh, and put a chamfer on there. And I am going to have to just recenter the height of the tool a little bit. So bear with me while we do that. Well, a quick change tool post makes it quite easy. I'm not going to get this spot on. 
near enough will do just for now because I literally just want to touch the edge of that so this isn't really that critical. So, all right. So let me see, this is all a bit kind of back to front here, but should do as long as it's not going to hit the chuck. I should be okay with that. Looper there. Let's see if we can get an angle so we can just touch the inside as well. Something like that. If we can get it far enough in, might have to have a change of plan if this won't go far enough. So we'll see. No, that's never going to go in there, is it? All right. Plan B then. So what we'll do, we'll just pop the tool out of there. Swap it over to the other side. Height should still be good. Don't need to readjust that really. We'll just get this uh, snugged into this side. Don't have to grunge these rise up really tight. You know they're uh, tight enough, good enough. And then we'll just. Flip this over to here. And then that should uh, get a bit nearer to what we need. Let's get a roughly 45 degrees on that. And then we can just come in and just touch off the inside ever so slightly. that that should do the job all right excellent all right so now all we need to do really is to part it off so we're uh, done with this tool for the moment and we'll switch over to parting tool if we find my parting tool in my stash there we go all right so that's the parting tool we're going to be using Make that on there and then what we'll do is we'll get this squared off so what I normally do with that is just rotate the chuck bring the uh, parting tool into the edge of the chuck and then you can square it up just on the edge like that which works quite well lock that off and then all we need to do is get the width of the cut we need, which is 4.8 millimeters is the actual final width. So I'll probably come down a little bit off that. I don't want it to be too long. So we'll probably go with uh, 4.6 millimeters. And then I'll just eyeball this to get the, uh, the parting tool at that distance. And what I'm going to do as well, actually, let me just backtrack a little bit. I'm going to put the feed in neutral, which is tricky because there's no neutral detent on this. You just have to kind of get it roughly in the right place and hope it stays there. I'm not sure that's got it. Let me just uh, power it up. No, it's not quite there. So okay. So there we go. We got the. Uh, lead screw in neutral so what we can do now is uh let me just wind the uh compound slide back a little bit and i'm gonna get it roughly in place get the cutter roughly in place and then we'll basically engage the feed and this will just help to lock the saddle to the uh to the lathe and stiffen things up a little bit and then we can just adjust this to give us the depth of cut we're going to need we just uh, actually measure that with the depth measurements end of the uh, caliper see if we can uh, get this in the right sort of place back that off a little bit get that a bit closer It'll be easier to measure then and that's telling me i've got 4.88 back off a little bit 
คุณวัดก่อนหน้าฟูลพอยต์ฟูลสองคนเลือกเอาไปมูดนะฟูลพอยต์ฟายฟูลพอยต์เอ้ยไปกันแบบฟูลพอยต์สิบ so that's a good place to part us off okay so let's uh, switch it on keep it fairly slow and then we'll uh, we'll see how it goes Cutting really nicely like that. There we go. Job done. Okay, so let's unlock that. Move this over. Oops. And there we go. Okay, so all we need to do now really is just to clean up this uh, this burr on this side. And uh, to be honest, it's so fine. I'm just going to do probably do that off camera. To put it on a stone and just stone that down, or I will file it down. It's not no point chucking it in the lathe to do that. So we'll get that cleaned up, and then um, I'll bring you back in in the gearbox, and we'll see if this will fit. All right, so we're back around the gearbox end of the lathe with the cover off, and let's fit our bush and see uh, see if it helps us in our quest to fix the problem of the. Uh, reversing noise on the lathe so take that screw off there's our bush that we made let's we'll see if that fits looks pretty good it's all right everything still moves it's not a really tight fit on there but that's kind of what i wanted really honest <laughs> okay so just pop the screw back on hold it all together if this was going to be permanent i would put a drop of oil in there as well but it's likely going to be sort of uh taken apart again if this doesn't work so we'll uh, we'll have a look and see if this helps so let's see if we can at least get it into position so fine there put it in the other direction Okay, and that's uh, that's looking better, to be honest. Um, previously, if we had it in reverse, as you saw at the start of the video, it was uh, grinding all the time. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a pair of safety goggles on because I don't like running the thing without them. So get some safety glasses on. Not that you can see that. I'm just going to run the lathe a bit and see what happens. So we've got it in forwards. And I'm just going to keep clear because I don't like running things with the guards off. So there you go. That's a, that's a lathe running forwards with the feed engaged. We'll turn it off, reverse the direction, and we'll see what happens here. Before this would have been horrible, but we'll have a look, see what happens. Yeah, uh, no, see that it's uh, it's better. And you, know, you notice that it's better right up to the point where I actually say it's better. That's kind of that's what we call a stress test. If you want to know if something's working in engineering, if you want to know if something's actually working really well, be very optimistic and praise it and say what a good fix it is, and that will nearly always expose any wrinkles in your plan and any faults. So, yeah, we were close. It's better, but it's not good enough. Try that again. See, I couldn't even do that before. That would have just torn the gears. But yeah, it's still turn it off. It can still pull too far forwards. So um, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go with plan B, which is to make a new inner bit for the detent. So we're going to have to make a new spike. Um, and I've got a, I've had a bit of a think about that as well. And Basically, in the back here, in this casting, which is uh, looks like a sort of cast aluminium housing here, there's a couple of dimples that the spike engages into. And what I think we're better off doing is if we make a new one of these that takes a lot of the backlash out and a lot of the slop out, 
we'd probably be better off rather than having a conical spike on the end of this being that way probably better off just having a parallel piece on the end having just a, a cylinder rather than a cone just with a slightly rounded end and then drill these holes out to actually be cylindrical holes through there so when we engage this it actually engages a pin into a hole that's quite close fitting with less wobble so we have less wobble on the shaft this would engage better and hopefully hold those gears in place so that's plan b um that's quite a lot of work to do i will show you that i will do a video about that but i think we'll make that part two of the uh the case of the noisy reversing lathe chuck i hope you've enjoyed watching so far i hope you're looking forward to the next thrilling installment as we see if we can tackle this problem if you've got any ideas as well, um, feel free to leave them in the comments on this video. You know, if you can see anything that I'm missing here as well, if you can, if you can sort of say, oh, well, that's because you haven't flicked a specific switch somewhere that's hidden or, you know, I might be overlooking something really obvious. So feel free to comment below if you've got any input with this. And uh, in the next video, we'll see about rebuilding this and hopefully fixing the problem. Um, and I hope that works because I haven't got a plan C yet. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and until next time, catch you later.